Hello everyone, uh, this is going to be a short series of videos on how to use the flavor editor, specifically the one Pear made, um, assuming it will be soon to be uh, public, publicly released. Um, so some of the techniques I'm going to be showing you in this video will apply to the old flavor editor, but this video is going to be utilizing the new one. So let's get started by opening up a flavor file. So you're probably going to have your game unpacked hopefully using UXM and you can go into care I call it care CHR and I'm gonna go to Torrance file which is already unpacked and I'm gonna go find the flivver which is right here and I'm gonna open it with the tool and we're gonna to see Torrent uh, he's beautiful as you can see uh, let's make this a little larger there we go um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to um, use the viewport here. Um, before you even worry about this, let's kind of make sure you know how to look around here. You're gonna hold and drag left click to just move around, pretty intuitive. You're gonna hold the middle mouse button, aka the scroll wheel, to do this. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I mean, right clicking is um, more advanced stuff that you don't need to worry about right now. Over here in the actual editing window, we have several little sections here. We have the mesh section, which is the part that you actually see. Um, we have dummies or dummy polys. These are, for example, where effects are going to spawn on the character if you assign it one, where it holds weapons, etc., etc. Um, and then there's more up here at the very top left. There's materials, which is textures. Um, and in case you don't know, a material is a set of textures with certain parameters that controls how the textures work. We will, this, um, this is going to require a whole separate video, so we'll go into ma detail about materials later. And then we have bones. Um, this is really just good to kind of take a look at to make sure you have all the correct names when it comes to model weighting, um, weight painting, and um, I wouldn't worry too much about this section right now if you're a beginner. So let's start with mesh. And let's uh, take a look at all this here. What can I do with each mesh? So, well, first of all, let's show you how to select something. You can either select all meshes, which is highlighted in yellow, or you can select individual meshes. So even though it's called body, that's just how FunSoft named it. You know it's called body. It's selecting the ton specifically. Let's uncheck that and look elsewhere. Let's try um, saddle, um, which is all the visual meshes for the saddle itself. And we can do a couple of things with it. We can translate it, we can scale it, we can rotate it. And a new feature is we can mirror it. So translation is moving directly along the axis. So if I change the up down to 10, for example, it's going to move that saddle up a bit. You can make it really pronounced. That way when we open the game, you can see it. We can scale it. Um, if this is checked off, that means when you change one of these numbers, all of them are going to change. So it changed every single one to 300. That way it has a uniform scaling. And there's a gigantic saddle. Um, then you can rotate it. There's swivel, roll, cartwheel. This is a pretty intuitive interface. It's kind of like any other model editor. You can rotate it 180 degrees, which swivel is like along the ground. Like it's rotating like this. We can roll it 180 degrees, which is rotating perpendicular to the X axis, which is the red line. And then we can cartwheel it, which is back and forth along the Z axis. Um, and it looks like ultimately we ended up in the same position. Anyways, now you can mirror things. So let's say I check off Y. It mirrored it along the global Y axis. Uncheck it. Check Z. Same thing. X. Same thing. Um, there's some other lesser known features such as toggle bat face culling. So you see how I look through it like this? I can see straight through it. Well, this is actually intended by FunSoft. It's not an issue because usually the saddle is right around torrent. But for example, if I had an issue 
and I don't want to see you straight to the mesh. I can toggle this. Um, and it should have a solid back, like back face when we play in the game. Um, there's reversing normals. These are not um, textured normals. These are mesh normals, which also control textures. You can reverse face sets. Um, this is usually not needed, but you can do it if you um, hate yourself. Um, just, there you go. It looks like the bat face calling refreshed, so now we can actually see it. Um, there's the last things are center of the world and delete selected. I'm not going to delete it because I'm still playing with this, but if you select that, it's going to delete the entire mesh and you won't be able to get it back. So I recommend saving these and backing up your flavor um, files as you're editing them, especially if you're doing a lot with it. Um, if I translate it all the way to the right, 180, and I click center of the world, it should bring it back. And there it is. Um, this is gonna look ridiculous in game, of course. Now there's a few other things. I'm gonna actually delete this saddle just so you can see the dummies. So dummy poly editing um, has been pretty limited in the old tool. And with the new one, it's a lot more flexible, a lot more intuitive. The first thing I recommend doing is going to preferences, dummy thickness, and increasing it all the way to the maximum number, which is 15. And it kind of makes each dummy a little thicker. So you'll notice that there's a green and a purple area on each dummy point. The green indicates the, um, what's the word, the vector, which way the um, effect or whatever is assigned to the dummy poly is going to be oriented. And then the pink is just to indicate size and whatnot. Um, the pink just indicates the point itself. So there's several things you can do with dummies now. You can make a new dummy if you want to. You can add all of them as a preset. That way, for example, I'll show you right now. Let's say I'm working on another model and I want all these dummies transferred to the new model. All I have to do is click add all, well, let's select all dummies and click add all as a preset. Make sure it's in this little drop down here, 98. And now I'm going to delete every single dummy. So I'm gonna click delete selected. Um, now Torrent has no dummies. Um, this means a lot. I mean, like for example, the player isn't going to be able to ride on Torrent anymore because it doesn't know where to sit on Torrent without a dummy poly. So if I want to throw it all back on, I just click 98 and I click OK. And there they are again. Alright. So if you want to select an uh, individual dummy, it's just like the meshes. You can click select. Um, some of these are going to be harder to see. Um, let's see if we can find a good one. Usually 900 is the ground. It might not be the same on torrent. Um, but whatever you select will be highlighted in yellow. So that's all I'm doing is looking for something that's easy to see right now. Just to kind of give you an example. Let's just, um, I'm just going to select one. And of course you're not going to be doing this when you're working on a flavor. But or fiber. I'm going to just move it out of the body itself because right now a lot of these dummies are inside torrent. So I'm just going to select that and translate it to the right, maybe 50. And there it is. Um, so let's play with this dummy a little bit. Let's say I want to rotate it. It's the same thing as the mesh, the exact same thing. Um, I can do a cartwheel. Um, let's do 90 degrees. Uh, should be upwards, but I could be wrong. Uh, yep, facing up. It's a little hard to see in the video, I'm sure, but there's a green line going straight up. Uh, so it's going to orient whatever effects or models or parameters are assigned to that dummy poly upwards instead. Um, and I'll, I'll make a, now that I think about it, I'll make another video that goes into more detail regarding dummy polys. Um, you can mirror as well if you want to. So it's pretty similar. There's another thing you can do, which is you can duplicate a dummy. And it's going to spawn where the last dummy poly on this list is. I know it's a bit strange, but let's just move this one too so you can see where it is. Uh, let's move it 100 up. There it is. And that is exactly how you duplicate a dummy. 
And the ID, like the ID that you're going to use when you're using Dark Souls Animation Studio or Map Studio or anything, is going to be the reference ID right here. Um, so 500 or 10, for example, is this one. That's the number you're going to call for. Or sorry, it's not 10. It's uh, I moved them on one, but you get you get the idea. Um, we'll go into materials later, but I'll show you a few basics that you can do with it right off the bat. Um, there's material select, um, like viewer highlight is what I should call it. I'm sorry. Um, so let's highlight uh, the belt. It lets me just kind of see where that material is applied instead of having to like go back and forth between this and the mesh names. I can just highlight it and then I'm like, oh, okay. I know I can apply textures to this one. If you click edit, you can change all the paths of each texture. We'll go into more detail about that later. Here's a new feature compared to the old flavor editor. You can add a preset. So if I click add preset here and I'm like, oh, I don't want to copy all these textures and type everything and do all that again. Now that I have a preset, I can go to something like um, this and I can go to the presets drop down, click belt, it's named after this, and I can just highlight uh, apply preset and I click OK. Now when I edit it, it's the exact same as the other um, material, uh, this one. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Let me go over my notes real quick, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, another thing you can do now that you have presets with dummies and materials is you can share them. Um, so if you want to share it, I'll just show you right now. Go to the local disk. This is where the flavor editor is. You're going to see two files. One's named in presets, another one's named D presets. In presets is going to have each material that is saved as a preset. And you can share this file with somebody else if you want to share your presets. Um, you can edit this if you want to. It's pretty similar to JSON. Um, there is dummy presets. Same thing. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's see. With the old flavor editor, you're probably more familiar with JSONs. You can still do that if you want to. God forbid. Um, like if I select this. or I don't think I need to select anything actually. I can go to file. Export materials, pick where I want it. Let's just put it on the desktop called Torrent. And it's going to have a JSON with all the material information in it. I don't know why it's formatted like this. It's a little bit different than the old one. Um, hopefully that will be resolved soon. But you still have JSONs just like the other flavor editor. Um, you can export Bones JSON. I don't work with bones a whole lot, so I can't really tell you much about that. Uh, let's make sure I don't forget anything. There's still exporting. Um, you can export days. So if I click File, Export, it's going to export a day collada file, which is going to have everything except the bones. Um, and then you can add your presets using this. You can merge flivers with other flivers. So let's say I click Merge. It's going to um, just slap in another flavor along with torrent. Let's go to, uh, let's just add a dragon because why not? And there he is. Um, I'm kind of terrified to try this in the game, but we will see how that looks. Uh, let's see, did I forget anything? Of course, there's preferences. You can toggle texture refresh. Textures only work with um, map bins. Um, it doesn't work with MTDs or Mat XMLs, at least not yet. There's auto save. Um, you probably want that as frequent as possible. And when you're done, you click File, Save. Uh, and I believe I am editing the Vanilla Torrent, which is a terrible idea. Don't do that. I'm going to copy that to Mod Engine, and we're going to see what it looks like. So let's put it in. Uh, DSAS debug. We're going to yabber it, compress it again, and I'm going to change my config to launch that mod. We're going to see what torrent looks like. I'm sure it won't look great, but this is a good example of everything you can do. 
There's a chance the game might crash. Um, you can ignore this. This is kind of a debugging mod I've been using for a while just to play with stuff. Oh god, okay. Yep, yep, that's exactly what I thought would happen. Um, the dragon is there. He is there. Torrent is apparently freaking the fuck out. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit, see what the fuck's going on here. I'm curious. Oh man, that is pretty chaotic. Uh, you might be wondering why this is happening. It has to do with um, weight painting, mesh weighting. Um, it's not assigned to the armature correctly, so it's just going to freak the fuck out anytime I move around. Um, it looks like Torrent is actually... Uh, Torrent is okay, just doesn't have a saddle anymore. And I believe his feet now have the same texture as the belt. Um, but that's all there is to, for today for the basics of the flavor editor. Um, hopefully this can get you kind of oriented and you're not quite as overwhelmed when you're working on it. If there's any more um, basic videos that I need to make that I, need to make that I forgot to go over, just let me know because I want to make sure everybody can kind of get into this and know what's going on without freaking out. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, I'll be working on more and I'll see you soon.